It's quiet. Too quiet. We're right at the peak of hurricane season, but there are no storms around. The oceans are silent. You think about all the dud seasons you've had since 1950, it's extremely rare to have nothing at the peak. And it's not just the Atlantic. The Pacific is running quiet too, but things won't stay quiet forever. 60% of named storms and 70% of all hurricanes are after September 10th. I sat down with a half dozen experts, including Matt Rosencrans, the lead of NOAA's seasonal hurricane forecast. Every one of them warned we have a long way to go this season. Don't let your guard down until you're starting to cook the turkey for Thanksgiving. You should be 100% vigilant and ready. And there are signs the Atlantic could awaken suddenly in the next few weeks, which is not a good thing when you have a record warm gulf. The ocean temperatures are extremely favorable if anything should form. That tropical cyclone heat potential is very deep. That warm water is very deep in the epipelagic zone. So far this season, we've had six named storms. Five were tropical storms, and then one was a major hurricane, Aaron. Aaron was a significant long tracker storm, a high quality storm. Mm -hmm. uh, it perfectly field gold between every major landmass. You know, we had a category five hurricane already this season, which is quite exceptional. That definitely gave it a big boost. In, in terms of ACE, the accumulated, accumulated cyclone energy, um, you know, we're, we're definitely, we've slipped back behind average. ACE, or accumulated cyclone energy, measures how much heat energy hurricanes churn through and convert to strong winds. So far, we're running like 30 to 40% behind where we should be. Just nuts. Like, that's that's crazy that there's nothing, you know, with any chance. And you look at the models and there really isn't much with a chance. But it's way too early to relax. Way, way, way too early. Not only are we not out of the woods, we're not totally in the woods yet because, of course, the climatological peak is, well, I guess it's right about now, the 10th. There are three main reasons why the Atlantic has been quiet. Number one, it's just too dry. And that's because of this clockwise spinning high pressure that has been pulling dry air southwestwards, draping it across the Atlantic's main development region. It's just too dry. I think we're just seeing typical mid-latitude air maybe dipping a little further south, which probably is related to uh, the Bermuda subtropical high. Uh, trying to forecast like where the, you know, oh, we have a high pressure that sets up and dumps a bunch of dry air into the main development region. You know, we can't predict that months in advance. That high pressure has also resulted in subsidence or sinking air, which prevents updrafts and squashes any attempts at tropical formation. So really we're thinking that it was a bit of that dry air, the mid-levels, capping subsidence above, just really hit that. Yeah, it's really just kind of the large scale sinking air that's been plaguing the Atlantic, which is to the joy of everyone who lives along a hurricane prone coast. We also have the Saharan air layer, which is another form of suppression, right? Where it blocks sunlight, it keeps things more stable at the surface. The latest forecast from, from models, it might relax in a couple weeks and generally start acting to enhance activity. It's also believed something called the MJO, or the Madden Julian Oscillation, could be playing a role. Now, the MJO is basically a packet of thunderstorms that orbits around the global tropics. It has several different positions, each of which represents a different state of our atmosphere. And recently, that packet of thunderstorms has been lingering around the Indian Ocean. Those thunderstorms lift the air but what goes up must come down, and so it sinks elsewhere. Recently, we've had a lot of sinking motion over the Atlantic, but that might be about to change. We are starting to sort of head into that MJO phase two, where things start to shift towards the Atlantic Basin to allow for a little bit more vertical lift. And lastly, we've had this weird dip in the upper level winds over the central tropical Atlantic. We call this a TUT, or a tropical upper troposphere trough. And what happens is that any winds with that upper level system can disrupt a hurricane, preventing it from forming by kind of tearing it apart. So obviously the Atlantic has had some limiting factors, but what's next? Well, we do anticipate a potentially much busier stretch in late September and early October in association with a change in the position and strength of the MJO. When you get that MJO phase, that's optimal over that area and all of a sudden, boom, you get an explosion of activity. If you look at some of the deterministic modeling right now, you're seeing a little bit of an uptick. You go out about 10 days, you're gonna start to see some of that 
you know, a little bit of uh, additional energy start to generate all these areas. We are expecting more ascent or more lift to move over the Atlantic, making it easier for storms to form. We are also reaching the point in the year where our focus starts to shift. The main development region over the central Atlantic tends to simmer down. In a couple more weeks, we're getting to that time where, you, where I, I feel it starts becoming less important to look at what's coming off Africa. But we see more activity in the Western Caribbean and the Gulf, especially heading into October. Uh, but I think our focus needs to be in that area, closer to the leewards, and then also over the Gulf and the Caribbean. That's the sort of thing that could definitely be on the, the, the radar for later this season. With the ocean temperatures as explosively, record-breakingly warm as they are, if something gets ready to, to, to form and brew in, like, let's say, the, the Gulf or the Western Caribbean, it's around this time of year that something called the Central American Gyre forms. It's basically this big, sprawling, weak zone of low pressure draped from the Eastern Pacific to the Western Atlantic, sprawls over the Central American region as well. And it's just kind of weak counterclockwise spin and some storminess. And that's it. But once in a while, pockets of that spin and disturbed weather consolidate. It's just a large scale difference in flow. So you have, um, you know, like, Mid, mid latitude winds, the, the deep tropical trades, uh, you know, they gradually kind of create a large scale circulation. And that area in, in particular, the Central American gyre is just kind of a fo focal point really for all those things coming together. The changing seasons help to strengthen the gyre and they kind of shift it right towards Central America. That heating of the sun moving south it's able to move that that gyre further south. So then you just kind of have that area of low pressure sitting over top of Central America. So now we have this big area of broad diffuse spin, and it doesn't take much to get some of that spin to tighten, especially over water temperatures near record territory. The Gulf and the Caribbean, their warmest part of the year is actually the month of the last week of September and through the month of October. That's their warmest month of the year. So they've still got a bunch of energy to give out even until late October. So once you move that gyre down there, that's how you can get a burst of storm activity into that October time period. Yeah, I mean, right now, I mean, you know, there's a gyre, I'm assuming the models are right. Um, there's a gyre that's kind of set up in about two weeks. So maybe something out of that. Then it just becomes a matter of where our storm forms. And then of course, there's also the question of with the, with the Central American gyre, which side of Central America this stuff forms because sometimes it's on the Atlantic side in the Caribbean and then sometimes it's on the Pacific side. So it's a little hard to know. Now, Hurricane Milton was a Category 5 last year. It formed rather quickly out of the Central American gyre. So far, the Climate Prediction Center has drawn shapes for next week and the week after, highlighting that zone in the far western Caribbean and the southwest Gulf as a zone of low-end potential for development. And some of the models are also showing something similar. For now, there's nothing obvious or imminent concerning to land. But it wouldn't take much, and we are, again, a very long way to go with the remainder of this season. I want to emphasize we are like right in the middle of the season and this is the time it is very easy right now to go into you know your local store get the water get the gasoline tanks it, it's very easy right now to do that stuff because you know there's no mad rush no reason not to do it now uh, and and no reason to think that because it's been quiet up to this point that it's going to continue to be quiet. Do not think that way. Again, look at recent years like last year, like 2022, that were very backloaded seasons that did not have a lot of activity up until now and then exploded with activity. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.